கண்டு கொண்ட தெய்வம் அம்பலத்தை ஆடுகின்ற ஆனந்த தெய்வம் ஒரு சாறு மறைகளெல்லாம் போற்றுகின்ற தெய்வம் போதாந்த தெய்வமுய நாராந்த தெய்வம் இருப்பாடு நீக்கி ஒளி ஈன்றருளும் தெய்வம் எண்ணிய நான் எண்ணியவார் எமக்கருளும் தெய்வம் திருப்பாடல் பூவந்தனையும் சிவமாக்கும் தெய்வம் சிவையில் விளங்குகின்ற தெய்வமாகாதே தெய்வம் அருட்பெரும் ஜோதி அருட்பெரும் ஜோதி தனிப்பெரும் கருணை அருட்பெரும் ஜோதி எல்லாம் செயல்கூடும் என் ஆணை அம்பலத்தே எல்லாம் வல்லான் தனையே ஏத்து இன்று வருமோ நாளைக்கே வருமோ மற்றென்று வருமோ அறியேன் என் கோவே தோன்றுமலவெம்மாயற்று வெளிக்குள் வெளி கடந்து சும்மா கிடக்கும் சுகம் Good afternoon everyone. I had hardly dreamed that we would have such a wonderful welcome to our event this afternoon. We are so blessed to have Krishna Mal Jagannathan with us. We'll be just calling her Amma. And uh, I'd like you to know about this book that tells the story of her work with her husband Jagannathan. I regard them as two of the real authentic Gandhians of the world today in any country. And we've been so inspired by talking with you this morning. And I, I just... searching for words to try to convey what a wonderful heartwarming experience it's been meeting you and uh, so i'm very very pleased that the meta center can now share ama with the world uh, through the medium of this conversation and this film and what we would like to do is uh, first i think i will ask uh, joanna macy to introduce herself and then ask ama a couple of questions and i will ask her a couple of questions and then we would like to open it up uh to everyone. Uh I know my question will take about 3 hours for you to answer. <laughs> But we will just uh try to do the best we can. So we're doubly honored today in having the Macy's here with us today, Fran and Joanna. Oh, I I forgot. I'm supposed to introduce myself and and spell my name. I think I can handle that. Yeah, I'm Michael Nagler from the Meta Center. Metos with two T's. That's the only tricky part. <laughs> so now Joanna, could we hear from you and then mm-hmm. I would like you I'd like to ask you to start the conversation. I'm Joanna Macy. You want me to spell it? No, <laughs> oh, no. I think we're good. We're good to spell it. A R E S G E. Um, uh, words cannot express how um, honored I feel and how grateful to be sitting here this afternoon at this time of great opening for our country. Mm-hmm. Uh, something that we didn't dare hope for. We worked very hard, but we didn't mm-hmm. dare hope mm-hmm. that the likes of Barack Obama would be elected to be our president. So it makes me 
grateful for all those who labor because his being elected is the fruit of many hands and work on, in every state, in every town, and, and uh, people behind the scenes. And, and it is this that makes me feel so grateful to behold this woman, Krishna Mal Jagannathan Amma, uh, that you are alive in the time of my life because you represent for me and for so many people uh, the qualities of uh, Atmaharana, Ahimsa, true devotion to life, and incredible perseverance and fearlessness. So I have a number of questions, and I'll just say two. <laughs> Um, one question is, is short and factual. Uh, what is in the in the uh, campaign against industrial prawn farming that Lafti has spearheaded with you and Jagannatha, uh, which the Supreme Court in India voted in your ju judged in your favor? But the Indian government tried to cancel that with a bill, where that stands. So that's one question. And the other question relates to the uh, source uh, and the great spirit from which you draw. And I would like to ask you about working with fear. You, the way you never gave up, the way you, even when imprisoned, even when threatened, even when assaulted, uh, that you uh, would, in one campaign after another, just sit there. You wouldn't go away. You were not discouraged, and you had much that would discourage and cause fear to rise. And when I read about that again in this exquisite book, um, I feel I want to uh, learn from you. It is a great honor. I'm very, very happy to meet all my relatives, I can say. I have few relatives connected with this body. But all over the world, I have many, many, many relatives connected with this world. So some of our friends, like Sky, and some from England used to come and stay with me. When we are sleeping night, they just hold my hands like this and sleep with me. So, we are blessed with so many relatives all over the world. She was asking me, what keeps you going on? The, the essence of Gandhiji's philosophy is a spiritual message. How the spirit in this body can give, bring light to the world. We are just searching for for something in the dark. But we are not searching what is inside. Whether the inside is, whether there is light or darkness like that. Gandhi, we have studied about Gandhi, written so many books and things. And 
what he has in the heart he applied so he got an opportunity to express his spiritual power his spiritual strength the spiritual feelings the spirit can do anything like that he started to express his feelings in south africa and when he was in south africa a great duty was waiting for him in india that is to bring freedom to the country he never dreamt he will be able to shoulder such a big responsibility fighting with the british the mighty emperor emperor the uses a sun never sets in our kingdom that when he started the movement the country was divided into so many factors these princes kings and land owners landlords caste so many division in the how to bring them is a very hard task he had to face so many criticism lastly he risked his life at the gun and now he became a living legend everywhere gandhi is a living legend because of his sacrifice selfless sacrifice when he went to south africa i used to say he took the second birth mm. renounce the the whole family waiting for him to get money and to leave the life the family he renounced like that when we have when you want to follow the principle of gandhi there should be at least a little bit of bit of renunciation fearless sacrifice we must to see that how should be is return in our faith we were we have to be ever ready to face any consequences the boldness when we have the moral courage naturally it, the boldness will blossom in our heart that was he did it and he selfless sacrifice it has got its own merit spread like fire all over india when whenever he moved his tongue the old he started to mobilize get mobilized that you heard about our um uh, uh mohan raj mohan gandhi his grandson grandson and raja ji was his grandfather very intellect very powerful man he became the governor of india also such a great man he went and joined with gandhi started to spin and what about vinoba not only vinoba he took to his two brothers along with him 
So they went and joined the Ahmedabad uh, ashram. There, the scrunching was toilet was removed by a boy of thirteen. It was the bucket was so full, raining. He couldn't move it. These three brothers, they are they are supposed to call the highest cost. The uppermost cost. They three of them went. No, hereafter you, you don't touch it. Mm-hmm. We are here to do the scavenging. Mm-hmm. Like that, Gandhi brought a magic change in India mm-hmm. because of his spiritual power, mm-hmm. and he. Yes, a tremendous power he has got, and an opportunity that's waiting for him in India. Such a big responsibility. He shouldered it very, very powerfully. He led the whole country and brought the peaceful motherhood. But he went. Undertook so many risks, but every time he surrendered to God, he has what he has understood him. I am ordinary person, but you surrendered to God. I want, oh God, make use of me for a good purpose. He took. A noble cause, organized by many giant like J. Prakash Narayan, went and joined Gandhi. We know about the spiritual leader, a saintly man, went and joined. And at the age of eighteen, my husband got the inspiration when there was a call from Gandhi, leave the college and join the movement. He took all his books, kept it in a temple, and joined Gandhi Ji. From that day till now, some fire is burning in his heart. Mm-hmm. All right, we joined Gandhi Ji, went to jail, and all these things. But Gandhi Ji brought freedom to the country. It is on the city, like Delhi, Madras, Bombay, like that. It has not reached the bottom. So my husband started a second freedom fight, battle to bring peace and justice and freedom to the bottom to the lost man. How can we bring the freedom to the lost man when, when in one village, four people? Owning the whole resources in that village, the tank, the lands, the trees, the pathway, even the graveyard belong to certain dominating group. Amma, may I mention something here? You know, the whole world is like that village. <laughs> <laughs> there, so, are, there are forty people who own more wealth than the bottom forty countries on the planet. So it is there, but everybody, people like us who are interested in Gandhian way, we must have many movements, civil movements everywhere to bring justice to the people, the people who are we are fighting for are helpless, illiterate, they are struggling for their. Own existence. What can we expect from them? And so, I, like that, when we are fighting for the right of the people who are living in the villages, all on a sudden, one problem came into our place. That is the stream forming. Mm-hmm. It is a Very destructive industry. Nobody knows about it. 
Mm-hmm. Everybody is talking about a dev- democracy and all these. People have no idea of this problem. Mm-hmm. Just they came, first they started to cut all the coastal line, you know, destroy the mangrove forest. Mangrove forest, such a thick wall to protect the country from cyclone, winds and salt water. But they destroyed the whole thing. My husband started to cry. He used to take undertake many times fasting program. In one place he took 56 days fasting. He became very tired and lying down the car. And what, what about us when he was lying down like a sick person? How can we eat? We faced so many hardships. Then lastly he went to the court, got a wonderful verdict. But the government didn't take any notice of it. This still. There are so many political parties. Nobody came to us. Are you fasting? Are you struggling? Whether the police are arresting? Nothing. Nobody knows about it. Everybody in their own work of catching oaths become the power, politically power people. Yeah, and now, luckily, the uh, tsunami came and destroyed all the farms. Hmm. Now they are going to start it. We have to organize another fight for this. And it's just to, uh, for those of us in this room to recall, it's not just in the Indian coastline in Tamil Nadu. Yeah. It's Thailand, it's the Philippines, it's Vietnam, it's Ecuador. Yeah. This is a major multinational industry. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was thinking of a comparison to ivory poaching. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering whether it would be a good idea to organize a worldwide boycott against shrimp. First of all, I'm a vegetarian, so the fewer (laughs) shrimp we eat, the happier I am. But I bet we could bring the attention of the world. Mm -hmm. 99 out of 100 people in the world have no idea that when they go into a restaurant, what it's costing Mm -hmm. to the environment. And mm-hmm. even if the boycott doesn't totally succeed, at least it will bring people's attention yeah. to the fact that it's a luxury a food. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it's it's those who you know it's at the banquets, it's at the yeah. political mm-hmm. campaign dinners, yeah. it's at the cocktail lounges, it's, yeah. and so that uh, you could sort of target mm-hmm. the um, educational effort. Yeah. You know that what I like. What's most impressive to me about Lafti and the way that you work is when I look at the Gandhian movements or the nonviolent movements that have happened since Gandhi and King, they're either constructive programs or they're satyagraha. But you never you never see both together. And with Lefty, you have both. You do constructive program to help the villagers to build homes. And then when you need to, you do this active resistance. So, luckily we have two parts. All the struggle organized by my husband. Then I will be moving in the village, organizing the uh-huh. people. So we, we both together... The <laughs> Watch out! <laughs> you see, for example, whenever I go to the government, they are supporting me. Last June I went and asked them for free stamp of uh, uh, free, registering the land in the name of woman free. I gave them the application Monday and Saturday they declared uh, 1,068 ac- acres of land for registration, no fee at all, no registration, nothing. They can. Like that, whenever I go and approach, they are very favorable to my uh, request uh, they are helping me, so I will be them. My, uh, when they start cheap liquor, preparing the liquor in a packet and distribute to the people, my husband organized a big struggle. Immediately he was arrested. And following him, the 
movement should be going on. So we will go on organize the people, daily offering Satyagraha and going to jail. Like that, that part, we never miss condemning the government for their wrong mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, this brown issue, mm -hmm. they were, government is very helping us in every possible way to uh, help the village people. But they, when they started that stream farm, we every day we had a struggle going to the stream farms, sitting there, fasting, getting arrested, all these things. So my husband is very particular. Not just getting some help, development to work here, somebody can do it. As Gandhi and we mostly take the fundamental issue. Mm -hmm. and fight for it. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to suffer mm -hmm. to bring real freedom to the people. That is what he, his aim. Mm -hmm. So all the time, only now I am very tired of going to jail. Mm -hmm. And another point is, <laughs> uh-huh, very true. Jagannathan yeah. <laughs> is 90 years now. 95. Another point is, we both together used to work as two hands. Mm -hmm. He is my right hand. Mm -hmm. Now the right hand is lying down on the bed. Mm -hmm. Naturally, it affects my, mm -hmm. me very much. Sometimes I used to sit and cry. So for the last two years, I never, I didn't have any program of struggle. Mm -hmm. Just, but... Uh, I am sitting near him, but I will go and distribute the land, build the houses, that kind of things are going. Mm -hmm. But the struggle point, little I am hesitating. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. let me organize the things to move. Mm -hmm. Then I, mm -hmm. I have got a strong group, committed group with me. With them, I am surely going to start mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. This brown issue. So those were the two questions that I had, Amma. One is, are there groups of younger people now that are trained and ready to step into your place? Yes. Whenever there is a program, uh -huh. attractive program, yes. for a sacrifice, mm -hmm. for doing something heroically, mm -hmm. there are people. Huh. In our area, Especially women are going, when are you going to start the struggle against the, <laughs> for example, and these village people addicted to uh, illicit liquor yeah. with uh, used batteries and roots and sugar, they, they boil it and keep it underneath, <laughs> fermented, and then they take getting... <laughs> Ah, yes. Yeah. So it is very bad for the health of them. So the woman is say, Amma, when are you going to start it? Let us go. So we will, every day from 8 to 10, we will go around and collect all the vessels. They are afraid. Hmm. The district authority called me. Ah, what is it? How are you able to do all these things? The uh, uh, police are beaten by those people, but they are not beating you. But they have, in heart of hearts, they have their love for me because mm -hmm. I am giving them land and all these things. Mm -hmm. They are not. Mm -hmm. But I will go and bring a lot of vessels I have brought from the villages. Like that, one part of these kind of struggle is going. But taking the issue of uh, shrimp farm, mm -hmm. at present I have dropped it. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the tsunami has destroyed the whole farms. But now, in one or two places, they have started it. They are hoping to start it. But in some place, some um, landlords also, the uh, rich people are sending me letters. All right, we want to give the land to 
back to you. You can come and take it. Because now it's not uh, very useful. Yeah. Oh, useful. So polluted. Yeah. 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 Even um, that we have to, because we have to give employment opportunity to the villagers. We have to take it and convert it into uh, with uh, chemicals and some mm -hmm. uh, green manure. We have. Mm -hmm. There is a way to convert those lands into cultivable yeah. land. That have to be done. But now my concentration is at least for some time, and because of the sep separation, segregation from the main village the untouchable, the landless people are living in a place like cattle shed. That cattle shed, even that cattle shed was heavily damaged by the cyclone, tsunami. tsunami. And lot of attention to the fishermen community. Mm -hmm. These people are still neglected. I have to take up that problem. Mm -hmm. This issue is a burning problem in my heart. Mm -hmm. All the time my mind is going, well, when I am going to give them a good house. Mm -hmm. And they are also begin to ask me, Amma, before you going away from this world, before you going, not they, they won't say before going from this world, before you going, Please build a house for us. Mm -hmm. Then I used to teach them, the ticket has not come. Mm -hmm. I am waiting for the ticket. Either. Before I am going, surely I will give a nice house. Mm -hmm. So when we are having this kind of feelings, thought and plan, mm -hmm. suddenly I got an opportunity of this Opus Praise. And Opus Praise and this uh, Lovelyhood Award, she has got that part recommending my name to mm -hmm. these people. Mm -hmm. okay. And David and she now. You know, we have a project here yeah. which is taking the poorest people in the cities, yeah. uh, mostly African American people, oh, yeah. if you don't do something for them may end up in prison. Mm -hmm. And so our friend Van Jones mm -hmm. is organizing what he calls green collar jobs. In other words, mm -hmm. taking these young people and training them how to do solar panels mm -hmm. and jobs. So he says, this is the people who most need work and this is the work that most needs doing. Mm -hmm. And putting them together, he has a very powerful mm -hmm. formula and he's been very successful. It sounds to me like what you want to do mm. with these people in the cattle sheds is very similar. Mm. If you could give them work mm. restoring the land, mm. that's the work that most needs to be done, and that's the people who most need to do it. Mm. But that would be a good combination. And the, the judgment of the Supreme Court yeah. mm -hmm. was originally that the uh, prawn industry yeah. <clears throat> companies would pay damages. Yeah. Mm. Because they've wrecked it. They've wrecked yeah. the fishing. Yeah. The fish are gone. Yeah. You need other kinds of boats to get out there so that if they paid the damages, that would pay for these jobs. Yes. But yes. that hasn't yes. happened yet, has yes. it? And in Washington, D.C., I went to the World Bank, explained oh. to them. <laughs> <laughs> they must have been scared. <laughs> Did you give them the word? <laughs> and now we have stopped it. We know it is creating trouble. So we have stopped it. Then I gave my application for housing. All right, you write it uh, and send a proper application. We are ready to build the houses in 500 villages. Oh. Oh, that okay. much they have told me. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> let me see what is going on. Uh -huh. I have went okay. to the World Bank also, <laughs> and it is very difficult to get into the World Bank. So many checks. <laughs> they and are very afraid they, of you. <laughs> they take our photo and send it here. Then they are. <laughs> you know, usually when uh, we found this here also with the civil rights movement, mm. the court can make a right decision. Mm. 
and even the Congress can make the right decision. But then you need to go and make it real. And that means struggle, and that means being in the street. So I wanted to ask you, in connection with the Prawn struggles in particular, do you go beyond protest? Do you actually try to block entry of the construction crews or things like that? Just we will go and occupy the land. I see. We won't allow you to come and do it. I see. And before starting it, the police in the night will come and make raids uh-huh. and take all of us. Mm. Mm. Then would there be others to replace mm-hmm. you and it would go on like that? And the, what is it they are used to? They are all have a lot of muscle men. <laughs> yeah, oh, thugs. Oh, you see it. And throwing the stones. Oh, one day, early morning, five o'clock, we were traveling in the jeep. And a long five kilometers, the people are standing like that. And why these people are standing early in the morning? They started to throw. My husband was sitting in the front. But luckily he escaped. That stone came to me mm. the night. Mm. And always they try to do all kinds of criminal things. Is but, it possible to talk to these people to explain that what you're doing is going to help them? But they are doing it for some money yeah. only. Yeah. And yeah. what can they do? Yeah. Yeah, I was the reason I mentioned that I was thinking of Danilo Dolce, I who know, has uh, yes. the Sicilian Gandhi. Ah, yes. Because he, he was I visited a... his. Oh, you did? No. Oh, in those days, I went to Sicily and visited him. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I already respected you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I visited him. He had the same situation of being against the government and against the mafia. Mafia. And when he had a great success with a dam, building a dam, the Mafia came and said, well, now, Danilo, you have all the water. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, now we have the water. It's for all of us. Mm -hmm. And he was able to explain to them Mm -hmm. that what he was doing was helpful (coughs) for everyone Mm -hmm. in the district. So, like that. I I have a slightly related question. That's That's all right. (coughs) um, You moved around all the time. Mm-hmm. And then you started Gandhi Ground, and then mm-hmm. and um, then uh, Gutur. So the ashram, as a base community, mm-hmm. uh, has been, it seems, from uh, the Gandhian perspective, and then in your own lived life, very it's important. In Gandhi Ground, first, my husband. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, we had a great man, Reverend Kaitan, mm. from Minnesota. Mm. Missionary. Yeah. missionary. Mm. He is our Godfather, always lived with us. Whenever we start great struggle, he will come and lead us. Mm. Yeah. So, so, with him, Gandhi Gram people wanted to have a <coughs> place, a lands to start a Gandhi Gram. These two people, my husband and uh, Reverend Kaitan, went round, meet the village people, got land. And when they finished all the process of taking the land, nearly 200 acres of land they got. And um, slowly the Gandhi Gram people started to enter into politics. So these people left Gandhi Gram. So now we didn't have much good relationship with them. Let them they are having uh, all this uh, village work and educational starting uh, university and all this. But we have started that Vinoba Ashra in our we are serving the village people here. We always follow the path of Gandhiji perfectly. But I am very sorry to tell you, after my husband's ill health, 
we are not doing that is spinning. Mm -hmm. mm. That we have left it. And very difficult to get the cotton mm -hmm. slavers to the spin. Mm -hmm. A small piece mm -hmm. of slavers to spin. Mm -hmm. That we have left. In other part, we are having regular prayer and going to the, following the poor, non-vegetarian food and all these things are there in us. Well, as we face a disintegrating economy here mm -hmm. and a financial recession mm -hmm. and more and more foreclosures of homes, people mm -hmm. losing their homes, there's a an accelerating interest in people living together, making co-housing, mm -hmm. eco-villages, uh, a sort of Western-style ashram. Mm -hmm. And uh, that I wanted, this is a question that I'd love to hear you say something about too, uh -huh. uh, Michael, is that is, do you see in this financial crisis, mm -hmm. economic crisis, yeah. an opportunity to create uh, base communities. Yeah. The short answer is yes. Uh, the long answer is an article that uh, I've written called From Meltdown to Miracle. <laughs> right? it, it's a lot like the situation in World War II when Germany and Japan recovered economically much more quickly than the victorious nations because their infrastructure was wiped out <laughs> so they could start all over again with new equipment. And what we need to do is exactly the same, only not start with new equipment, but as you've been saying, Joanna, with new culture and new institutions. Because now more than ever before, we have an opportunity to say, this kind of economy, which multiplies wants, as Gandhi used to call it, is satanic, it, it cannot work. So now, since you see that it can't work, wouldn't this be a good time to try a simple economy based on real human needs and build communities around that, you know, move from consumerism to community. And Martin Luther King said, we must rapidly begin the shift from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society. So we can solve both those problems at once, the alienation and the economic instability by starting simple communities. And I was noticing that we took a bushel of apples down the road mm -hmm. and traded it for some vegetables. And on that very day, the economy lost almost a trillion dollars of value, but it didn't affect our apples. <laughs> you know, the vegetables were the same. So we had a wonderful discussion this morning at our Hope Tank about what all opportunities have been opened up now by successes and by failures. But one thing that I feel very strongly, and I'm sure you'd agree, uh, Joanna, is that we need to learn from each other. Uh, yes. Uh, the learning is the one part. And um, how to implement. Yes, yes. That is the question. Yes. So all over the world we must have mm -hmm. civilian movements everywhere mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> for something or other. We are all just, we are reading about Gandhi and everything, mm -hmm. sitting at home. Yeah. And dreaming about it. <laughs> How can we expect some change in the society? Yeah. Wherever so, we go, we must take it. Well, one thing is we need to learn from Lafti is that combination of constructive program ah, yes. and satyagraha. Ah, that is <laughs> mostly because of my husband's boldness. Mm -hmm. yeah. All the time <laughs> undertaking fasting and going to prison. <laughs> Sometimes I get angry with him. You know, <laughs> Without telling anything, he will go and undertake the fast. And 56 days he undertook the fast in a, um, on the coastal area in a fisherman community. There is no place even to sit and drainage is going down. He went and sat there and we gave him a, one card. He was lying there. My daughter is a doctor. She came and scolded me. How can we allow a part to sit on that? <laughs> <laughs> well, not only Don't that. Do have the courage to fight with him? <laughs> yeah. Does everyone in the room know what Lafti is? Yeah. 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 Yes. Well, I yeah. know, I, I don't think you do, and right. it's, it's, I, 
that stands for the uh, land for tillers freedom yeah so it's agricultural workers organized to own land yeah mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. you see yes i wanted to say some our friend the sky has mm -hmm. come from 83 onwards he had connection with her uh -huh. she today she told a story to the children it was very appealing so i want her to tell something about right. her experience of our work Sky, Sky if, you, if you okay, how she came to meet him. Only today she was telling the story. You can sit right here, Sky. Is that okay, Lorenzo? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Introduce yourself. A little bit. Uh, Sky Ferris from Ontario, Canada, and I have the. Uh, pleasure and uh, honor to travel with Krishnamal in her time in the United States this year. So there is an old story, and I mean, it's a true story of my life, and it happened at the very beginning of my time of meeting with Krishnamal. So this morning I tried to tell a brief version of it, <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Um, so in 1983 was the first time that I actually came to India, to South India, and I met with Krishnamal and was welcomed actually and came to their home. And what I told her when I came is that I had to come because I had heard that she and other Gandhians in South India were working for radical land reform without violence. Mm -hmm. So that's the key piece. Mm -hmm. I think at that time, probably in my life, I was hearing much more about uh, any question of land involved violence, ultimately. So I told her, it isn't that I didn't believe, I just had to come and see. So in their typical manner, they just include you. They just open their arms and you're included. And I think it was, it was my good fortune that within a couple of days, as I remember, uh, there was a call to go to visit a particular landlord in a nearby village. And actually, that landlord had been visited, I believe, many times by Krishnamal and Jagannathan. And this was, again, another opportunity. And so they asked me if I would like to come along. And so, of course. <laughs> but, I, of course, I didn't speak Tamil. And yet I knew that, you know how it is, when you don't speak a language, you still have lots of opportunity to see how the body language is, the tone, what are people doing, so you, you have that part. So I went along with them, we went to the, um, the house of this landlord, and he happened to be, I think he had about 100 acres that he was um, receiving the food from. And that is actually quite a lot more land than it is even legal for him to have. So I went inside with them, but I stood back towards the wall because I wanted to see as best I could what would go on. So what I remember is that Krishnamal and Jagannathan were just so calm, so calm, so relaxed really, and so present as they walked towards this man. And as I remember, they were about, they walked until they were about this far from him. So on this side, you have the two of them just really so simply and gently looking at this man, the landlord, on this side. But that landlord, his face is just tormented. He is just in terrible shape. And I think it was his inner, what I'm feeling is it was his inner emotional war was going on. Oh, I, honestly, his face just completely transformed. He, he just looked terrible. And he just, so in that period of time, that's what I saw. And so Krishnamal and Jagannathan continued in a respectful and gentle, quiet way, just telling him probably again for the maybe the 100th time that he had this a uh, number of acres of land in this village, but there were people outside the gate who didn't have any land at all, who worked for him and had really no chance of having a, a stable life at all. 
So in a way, I feel I can say the poor man. He was rich in one way, but he was very poor. The poor man, he was just taken by this feeling of, I heard later that he had worked for years to get this 100 acres. Mm -hmm. and, and he felt that he had finally reached a point of you know, comfort and security himself. But here, these two people were so calmly and gently just reminding him of the broader picture in his own village. And, and he, I think, good for him, he was taking it in. He, he was, uh, but oh, it was painful. Mm -hmm. So that's how things were left. That's how close they were, and that's what happened. And then at the, when Krishnamoa and Jagannathan felt that enough time had transpired, they just bid him kind of good evening, came and kind of picked me up, and mm -hmm. out we walked out of the compound. There's a nice wall around it with a gate. So we walked out, we walked out and down the road and back to the, the place where we were staying. So the next point time that this came up for me was about a month, I think it was about a month later. I was still hanging around, learning things mm -hmm. and enjoying the experience. And there came another call. And this time it was the landlord uh, asking to see Krishnamal and Jagannathan again. So, you know, what would happen? And I don't know that anybody knew exactly what was going to happen. But anyway, the three of us came, I remember it clearly. We came walking down that, that road, dusty road. We just turned to the doorway to the compound or something like maybe this wide. We just turned like that, and I could see the landlord and his wife beside him. And... He was radiant. He was he was shining like the sun, and his wife was beside him, and they, it just looked like it was a very happy situation. And we got to hear that the storm had passed, right? Mm -hmm. The healing had come for him, mm -hmm. and that he was ready to offer to Krishna and Jagannathan and the whole Lafty community to offer some acres at what they call a concessional rate. So it means it's not the same rate as the, what you could call the market price, but it is it is a lower rate and also they are precious acres. Mm -hmm. And he is willing that that become part of the Lafty scheme mm -hmm. for others. Mm -hmm. And not only that, they threw in a building. There's a little <laughs> building in the village. And the, I remember that it should become a, a peace center. Imagine uh -huh. going the second mm -hmm. mile. Eh? <laughs> so honestly, I will never forget that mm -hmm. man's face. So, mm -hmm. but they are very calm. Right? Well, I'm also trying to be calm. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a Canadian; it's easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> so they are just very relaxed about it all and appreciative and accepting this great joy. And then we just walk mm -hmm. out and down the lane again. And uh, to me, it's a story that helps me understand maybe a little bit about what is going on when mm -hmm. a landlord meets uh, people from the Sarvodhya movement. Mm -hmm. What's going on? There's really just a telling of the story of the, the reality, the bigger picture. You know, I, I think, Sky, behind what the transformation that takes place <laughs> in the landlord was a transformation that had taken place a long time ago in Krishnamal and Jagannathan. Mm -hmm. If they go, what you called earlier, renunciation, mm -hmm. they go through this renunciation. And if you come to someone and say, renounce, mm -hmm. it has no effect. Mm -hmm. But if you renounce yourself, and then you stand there quietly and say, look what I have done, it draws other human beings mm -hmm. into that circle. And that's how nonviolence spreads. Yes, I mean, there are probably many ways to tell this story. I feel to, they were very present even in just, mm -hmm. they were just really telling him of the bigger yeah. picture. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned another detail that shouldn't slip by us. It was very important. The fact that you were able to approach him with respect. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. critical. This is something that Gandhiji was an absolute genius. That no matter who you were, no matter what you had done, he had respect for what lived in you. You know, whatever you call that. Yeah. And when you do that, I think more than half of the battle is won. And they didn't give up on him. Well, that's the other the other important point, the you determination. Know, I, would have, I would have been tempted to just turn yeah. away muttering and so yeah. on. Yeah. But they, to hold the thought 
yeah. that he can change. Yeah. The situation can change yeah. and keep. So the persistence in mm -hmm. your own faith, that that soul has to be in that person, and the persistence in the face of your own suffering. You were saying earlier this morning about 40 years of transformation that it took to mm -hmm. bring peace to, to mm -hmm. one area. Could you say a little more about that, and then we'll see if other people have any. You see, I am not a good writer. Or <laughs> I'm not. A well, Joanna will be the writer for us. <laughs> but last June, it was a miraculous mm. action happened in our office. The, you see, I used to fail. There was a divine call for me to go on working on a particular area. In 1968, 44, landless women burned just putting petrol on them the, when they were in a hut, taking refuge in a small hut, they were mercilessly killed. Big tragedy. Um, all the politicians went, um, we also went there. Um, I took a strong decision. Anyhow, I must give land to all the women. That is my decision. And then, on those days, I used to feel, suppose anybody is willing to give land to all the landless poor. I am ready to risk my life if they want me on one condition. You must go to the kiln, in the brick kiln, and burn you. They are ready to sacrifice so much like that. Then we will give land to all the people. I thought it, I am always prepared to go, to take such kind of risk losing my life, giving my life for the sake of others. When I have such a feeling in my heart, I thought I must do this. Anyhow, I find the way to give land to all of But such a great opposition from all sides, if I have any meeting, the landless people won't come because they are much very much afraid of their own political um, violent people, mm -hmm. strong communists. They wanted to bring revolution, Chinese revolution, killing the landlords, taking the land, distributed. That is the. They thought how the Gandhian people won. They are going to disturb our area. The people are not going to vote for us. We will lose our political party, that kind of. They are always searching for me to drive away. You know. And the landlord's mind is in some other way. How can an untouchable become equal to us? They are not human beings. They are a creature. They used to tell me, you want to give land to the wretched snakes? They are so very, very bad people. They are like snakes. For them you want to give. Dirty people, untouchables. They are bonded to us. They have taken money. This person has taken 150 rupees from me. And that person has taken so much money. They are bonded to us. And how, uh, how are you going to bring equality? You go away like that. But in spite of all these opposition, we established the five Gandhi peace centers. Mm. We couldn't, we were not allowed to enter into any village. Just secretly we'll go and collect the children and start the school. When the parents are in the Paddy fields, we collect and bring them to certain trees. Under the tree, we will ask them to sit and give them a little bit something to eat and give them 
some thing to the right and come away. So it, and another, how I am able to organize in there. All the women used to go early in the morning, five o'clock to clean the landlord's cattle shed. What is the payment? The pay is only five rupees per month. Mm-hmm. Then I went and I am ready to give you 30 rupees. You don't go. You don't go. Like that I went round and collected all the cattle shed cleaners and they are they are very happy. <laughs> oh, five rupees in the thirty. Then some news is spread. We are there to help the you know. Then I went round and collected all the women. Organized the uh, a struggle to release the temple land. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see whether they are cooperating. And I told them, when the landlord started to plough the uh, land, the temple land is for the poor. We must go and occupy the land. And when they start ploughing, we must untie the ploughshare, took ploughshare on our shoulder, march to the police station straight. <laughs> like that, I am going to do it. When I went to that place, when 44 women burnt alive, I just went and shed tears. I didn't took any money with me, just I went. And I have formed a strong decision with sincere efforts, with the committed workers, I was able to distribute 13,000 acres in that uh, area. Now, <coughs> now the landlords <coughs> are willing to come and see me. Where is Amma? When she will come? Like that they started. <laughs> that I was able to bring the harmony between the <coughs> conflict groups. <coughs> so, let us have the hopes, positive hopes, <coughs> optimistic hopes. And let us, I feel getting land it is a desperate attempt, but God's grace, we have succeeded. Let us hope for the best. Mm-hmm. 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 That's mm-hmm. just wonderful. Mm-hmm. Can you maybe tell us one thing that you've learned in all these years of work? and struggle, and then we'll see if anybody else has any questions for you, and then we'll let you go. (laughs) So is there one thing that you'd like to share with us that you've got from all this experience of struggle? That one thing is physical tiredness, physical thing is that, but the spiritual, the spirit inside, whenever we start in noble, work for a noble cause, that uh, power is great and great and great, it is growing and growing. The mental power, the spiritual power, it is always very strong to face any hardship. That is my message, that is my experience. Many times I heard the people started to attempt for my life, just put the petrol and burn. But what I did it, just I didn't want to just run away from them. Sat down with a cross, let's started to pray. All right, anyhow I am going to meet the end, but let me be with my friend God. Like that I was sitting. They tried their best, shouting, but they didn't. I have the courage to face them, but they didn't have the courage to Mm -hmm. put petrol on me and fire. Mm -hmm. They were just shouting, abusing, telling all these filthy things, Mm -hmm. but they couldn't attempt Mm -hmm. to pour the petrol. 
like that. Three or four times I had that experience also wow. with that uh, muscle man. Early morning, five o'clock, walking alone in one place, they surrounded. gathered, uh, surrounded me with the can in the pe petrol can and the sticks, matchbox and everything they did. But what happened? The man with the petrol tin had a um, car accident and died hmm. later. Hmm. So it seems that it's a great spiritual strength ah, that yes. you got, yeah. and that's mainly through renunciation and yes. devotion to a higher cause. Yes. Do you also have a spiritual practice? Ah, yes, 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 yes. What do you do? That, is, that thing I got it from my mother. Ah. Is and it a mantra? Or? That early morning, she had many difficulties faced when at the age of 32 become a widow mm -hmm. to manage a big family of 12 children. Six children died mm -hmm. one by one and six children remained to bring them up how, how hard it was. Mm -hmm. Early morning and I don't know why she is uh, doing it. And she used to keep a mirror under her bed and first what she would do taking the mirror, looking at uh, the mirror, her, her own face, and go out facing the east and taking the name of God for some time and do the prayer. And she used to say there is that uh, morning star, early morning star, four o'clock it is, shining like a bright light in the sky. When it was very calm and quiet, the whole nature seems to be conversing with uh, a God. And she started to say the name, take the names of God, repeating, repeating for some time. And then she rushed to inside the house and start working. <laughs> so like that, all along, even here, four o'clock, I don't know how I got that uh, habit here, four o'clock I happened to be awakened and in uh, Washington, 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 D.C. The sky was very clear, no cold like that. Every morning four o'clock I used to get up and see the star, the morning star. Here it is so much mist, couldn't see. But my mother <laughs> San Francisco. do that. Mm. First she will do the prayer and then she will start work. Like that, I have got that habit of. And then seeing the star, the program will be coming in my mind one ah. by one, one by one. That is the time, a divine time. Mm. Brahma Mukhurta. Oh, Brahma Mukhurta. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Brahma is uh, early morning, two to four is Brahma Mukhurta. Mm -hmm. And then this is just be with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am with you, you are with me. I am not uh, alone. <laughs> you are with me, you are my partner. Then only we will have that uh, courage to face any difficulties. Well, certainly why, why to take it is a difficulty. Yes. It is a process in the life. <laughs> I want to feed 500 people. I have to cook, take all the uh, difficulties with me. Without uh, difficulties, without hard working, how can I prepare food for 500 people? Like that, I want to do something, noble thing in the world. For that I have to go through all this process. Don't you think it is any difficulty like that? It is just a process mm -hmm. to go through it mm -hmm. to achieve a good thing. Yeah. Well, this spirit of yours is going to work and work and work. I think mm -hmm. now we've only begun to see <laughs> the results. Does anyone else want to? Uh, Fran? 
I'm Joanna's husband, Fran. I'm, this is the drug of nothing. When Joanna and I lived in uh, New Delhi for two years in the 1960s, it was the time of the so-called Green Revolution, mm. that the four international banks and the foreign aid agencies and the foundation, especially Rockefeller, uh, were promoting so strongly, and the Indian government was very interested. We saw in the Punjab how the land became owned in larger and larger parcels yes, by richer and richer people who, who uh, uh, had to buy the seeds every year. They had to buy fertilizer. They had to buy pumps because it required so much water. And then as they got big, they, of course, had to buy tractors. Yeah. And this was a whole different uh, agricultural right. economy. In Tom, my question is, in Tamil Nadu, uh, has modern technology made it harder for distributing land to uh, individual farmers' families? And yeah. do you promote traditional ways as Mahatma Gandhi did? You see, the green revolution, it is just like our shrimp farm. <laughs> it is utter failure. Mm -hmm. Utter failure. Mm -hmm. Utter failure. And spoiled the mother here, putting so much chemical substance. Mm -hmm. The person who promoted that green revolution, our Swaminathan, mm -hmm. Yamma Swaminathan. He got many awards from all over the world for his scientific research on uh, chemical, a uh, play of mm -hmm. chemical manure and all. Now, people, now he is promoting this farmyard manure. Please wow. don't use mm -hmm. chemical. Mm -hmm. Now he has come out to say. Good for him. Mm -hmm. oh. I know people are listening to him. Oh. Just mind changing his mind. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then, it, <laughs> now, the people in our area, they are hungry for oh, the, to have the right over the land, mm -hmm. to own something. Mm -hmm. For a generation, to, they have never dreamt they are going to have some land. Mm -hmm. Because in dominating big powerful landlord he is in charge of so many acres. When are you going to get it? That is, they have never dreamt, but if they wanted to have land, they are getting land. If you ask them, you put organic manure. Just yes, they go and get this chemical manure and put it. They wanted to have quick result. Yeah, you know, lack of patience. Yes, but, but I have to do it. Do so have you been in some places? I myself go on prepare organic manure and give ah, them. Ah. But for all the people, mm. I have to do it. Mm. But that green revolution has spoiled our land. It has spoiled your land. Killed the mother earth. Mm. Amma, do you find that the young people today are interested in exploring new things? And <coughs> That's all that, that we. They, they have the same kind of nobility of spirit that you because that's but they are getting all the knowledge and everything. They are very curious to come to uh huh. America. They visit you oh to come to America. America. That is the dream now. Well maybe they'll they'll learn Gandhian methods here. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else have a question? Thank you, friend. Yes. I I do. Um, I do you want to come puncture once again? Um, <clears throat> um, there are many of, of your uh, movements. I one I'm particularly interested that you went to a village where you didn't even talk the, the language that they did there, and yet you find that solidarity at the end. So I'm wondering how did you organize with these people? There were no bounds there and then suddenly you, you make this great movement there. What I learned is 
language is not a barrier. It is a sense of feeling in your heart. It will take its roots in the minds of the people. When I went to Bihar, I faced a very big problem. One man, one priest, sitting in a three-storied building with a golden chapel. Only 30,000 acres of land in Buddha Gaya. Oh, Buddha Gaya, yes. Buddha Gaya. Yeah. Then I thought, I must stay here to do something. Then I went and told my husband, this is what happening. Uh, wherever you go, this is the problem. And we are doing work there, you wanted to stay here. But in my heart, in the underground <laughs> plan is, I must stay there. Mm. I stayed there, they were talking, even not even Hindi, mm -hmm. Magadi, mm -hmm. they are speaking. Mm. But I were able to organize them in such a way mm. to fight with that mighty person. Mm. And then, all of a sudden, this uh, emergency came, mm -hmm. arresting, ar arresting, putting my husband in the jail for 18 months. This All are arrested. All the people are arrested. But uh, I am very careful to escape from the hands of the police. Came down to Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. But I have got a very good friend, the district collector and the partner. Chief Secretary of the government and another collector, three of them assured me, we will take care of it, we don't worry about it. They were writing, writing to the government, how that person is owning the land illegally. Mm. Then, lastly we got the land distributed 24,000. Mm. Then only the government, central government called me to the offer me this Padma Shri, right? Uh, this is uh, a great award in India. Padma Shri is one of the best awards. Then my husband time. got very angry. <laughs> How can you go to receive? And later he was given that Padma Shri. Well, it was announced, it came in the paper. He didn't take food, anything. Mm -hmm. Because I must answer that stay, uh, central government. It is the practice of the British people. When the people are starving for food, why still they are having this kind of giving awards and everything? Like that he refused. After writing a strong letter condemning their policy, he started to eat. <laughs> it's the language, it's the language of love. But yeah. it matters. And then, yes. Thank you. You know, what I'm hearing often from what you say, Amman, what I'm reading, is that you're not attached to the method. Sometimes we find people, they want to go to jail for the sake of going to jail, or they want to fast for the sake of fasting. But I hear from you that there's a sense that now one way is appropriate, now another way is appropriate. It's not the method, it's how you reach people, whatever is required to reach people. Did you find over many years that you learned which methods to use? We must go to the bottom. Uh -huh. Identify yourself with them. Uh -huh. Come to their level. Uh -huh. Sleep with them, eat with them, mm -hmm. and then take up their issue. Uh -huh. Then only they will follow you. Not easily, they, we can't organize them all very easily. Mm -hmm. We have to go down. So I am going, I used to go and sleep with them. Mm -hmm. Only very little place, but they wanted to give me best place to sleep. Nothing to spread. They will collect all the old clothes, make it as a bundle. They used to give, hey, let us give some pillow for Amma. Mm -hmm. Dirty, it is smelling, <laughs> but laying my head on the all the sufferings used oh. to come to my mind. Oh, oh. what an image! This woman, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's like a that. wonderful image. When, when they go and live with them, take their mm -hmm. own food and sleep with mm -hmm. them, naturally they have got an attachment to these. Yes. 
Well, yes, I have a question and I wanted to ask it to both of you. It seems that in the United States, our big problem is getting people to be able to work together. We are very separate and very alienated from each other, and we spend all our day watching television instead no, of talking. This point. <laughs> so, to the to the two of you, and maybe also to you, Joanna, how what do you do to help people to get together? What do you do to help people to cooperate with each other? See, you prefer the same situation anyway. but what I am doing it whenever we want to gather I used to tell them my dear sisters you are not an empty box there is a light to represent the light bring one lamb and keep it let us join together and pray and look to, to the light so like that now we are all for physical development and material development. Mm -hmm. When we touch their heart mm -hmm. for spiritual development, mm -hmm. surely everybody will come together. Mm -hmm. That is my experience. Mm -hmm. That the spirit of division, separation, and self-development, individual development, is it taking place everywhere, not only in <coughs> America, everywhere, even in the family. Even in the family, there is a division. Rich and poor is the division in the family. But how, when we have a common approach, common cause, everybody is coming together. Only through our spiritual life we can bring them together. That is my experience. That's what I am doing it now. Whenever we have any meeting in the village, hmm. we ask them to bring one lamb. Hmm. It is a beautiful sight to see, hmm. keeping the lamb and sitting together hmm. and start to say, hmm. lead kindly light. Hmm. It has its own hmm. experience. Hmm. I think this experience. is the great challenge at this moment mm -hmm. because we work together fantastically mm -hmm. to elect Obama. Mm -hmm. ah, there yeah. were people, and now mm -hmm. uh, is the time when we have to not stop. Yeah, definitely. And that he is actually he first president to come out of community organizing. I mm -hmm. thought it was certainly in quite a while, and that his program looks like it's going to give tremendous government stimulus to yeah. community organizations yeah. and he's going to uh, develop that so uh, study circles, study action circles, mm -hmm. community self-reliance, mm -hmm. the localization movement, yeah. it seems to me there are a lot of yeah. opportunities. Of globalization, localization. Yeah. Yeah. Men's retreats. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> hold on for just a minute. I think, Joanna, what we're challenged to do is to come up with concrete projects for those communities of people to do. Yeah. I think that's what holds us together when we're doing yeah. something that we believe in. Yeah. And so I'm very um, thrilled with mm -hmm. the emphasis that you are bringing, Michael, mm -hmm. to uh, putting our, directing our attention again to that important way of Gandhi's of the yeah. constructive yes. program. Yes. And that, and you're, I love the way you point out that Lofty combined yeah. that yeah. with Satyagrahi in a very yeah. unusual way that yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that you yeah. don't see you just, elsewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that that's a great teaching for us at yeah. this time. That's what I'm taking away from Because you have something like the landless workers movement in Brazil, which is, a, you must know about it. Oh, yes, I know about it. This wonderful constructive program. But whenever they're attacked, they have no idea what to do. They throw sticks at the police. They're not like you. They don't know how to sit down. And then you have things like the overthrow of Mr. Milosevic in Serbia, which was a fabulous uh, resistance movement. But the minute that he was out of office, they didn't know what to do. There was no constructive program. It stayed him. fragmented. It stayed mm -hmm. fragmented. So yeah. I see an incredible potential here mm -hmm. that we could make 
our movement aware that it has both a constructive and both a res and a resistant element, yeah. and when to do which, I think it could be all the power that we need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here we are in the United States of America in this room. Uh -huh. I counted 18 people. Okay. Yeah, that camera. Okay. Uh, and, and you're a teacher. You're in a class with many. Well, Not or, anymore. Okay, with, 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 in, a, in a group. What I want to know is what do you do in a class, in a given situation, like here where people are sitting together in the room, so that people will feel united, so that people will feel close to each other, cooperative with each other. What specific process do you go through? I mean, the wonderful idea of holding a lantern or a, a, a together or a candle together or having a common project. <laughs> but we need to study this. We need to learn how to bring people together. And I... I leave myself open to anybody that has ideas to how to do this. Yes. I want to give a, a very little example, very little compared to your tell, work. Tell us your name. Before you. Hello, I'm Susan Schaller, and I was asked to teach sign language at a, um, a program for disadvantaged youth in, in inner city Oakland. And it was uncomfortable the first couple of days, especially because... I was not only the only white person, but I was the teacher, and I didn't like the you know the, the way it was set up, or I was stereotyped because I was in a position of power, and uh, these are 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds, and uh, there were many people who, um, well, in that teenage way, a lot of posturing, a lot of resistant attitudes. Uh, attitudes yes, definitely posturing, and a lot of. Uh, projection um, of stereotypes of who I was, and I was um, not not liked by definitely some of the people. And at one point I stopped teaching sign language, and I, I used a, a situation, I don't remember what came up, and I talked about how I was uh, suicidally depressed when I was a teenager, and that I contemplated jumping. And that I didn't know how to how to deal with all these emotions, and I didn't know how to deal with my life, and I didn't know how to, and and I almost jumped, and I was so glad that I didn't, and that I met people who whom I never thought of meeting ever, deaf people who signed, and I I was so shocked at this visual communication and this visual world, and it was a gift, and it drew me out of myself, and I learned a, a brand new world and. And I learned that I was related to deaf people, that they taught me how to use my eyes. Mm -hmm. And I shared this story with them and I said, you don't know what's going to happen when you're 15 and 16 years old, but we are all connected. And I never knew I was connected to deaf people. And yet mm -hmm. they taught me how to see and they introduced me mm -hmm. to my face. And after I shared that, and so answered your, your question, that was my example, but what I've discovered recently in life is the more authentic I am, the more I, I express equality and connection, and that I can learn from you, and uh, the, the more I do that, the more people wake up. I mean, it is, it is awareness that we're connected, and, and I do believe, and I say this quite openly to not just young people, but people I meet, I gave up my car, so I meet people more on the street, and that's part of community. And I say, we've got to take things out of our ears, we've got to take computers away from our faces so mm -hmm. that we can see eye to eye. And I, I think that in the United States, one of the biggest things we can do is just connect mm -hmm. with people, mm -hmm. and just look people in the eyes and mm -hmm. say, hello, how are you, mm -hmm. and mean it, mm -hmm. and not just rush off to our mm -hmm. car. Mm -hmm. So that's very little, mm -hmm. but... I'm it trying. doesn't matter how small or how big it is, Susan. <laughs> yeah, in this Thank program you. that we have from consumerism to community, we're developing a little list of things that people can do. And one of the most remarkably effective and simple, this is like Cuddy, because everybody can do it every day, to just give people your one-pointed attention when they're talking to you. They did a study a while back with little infants. They put a recorder on their diapers <laughs> And they were able to tell that they got 90 seconds of attention from their father in the course of the day. Oh, no. 90 seconds, a minute and a half. 
-hmm. So we can triple and expand just to give people, even if they're saying something you don't like, you discover that there's a person in there that's not just what they're saying. And as the, as the Buddha say, I said, he said, looking nervously at Joanna <laughs> to make sure he gets it right. <laughs> if, if you want to, if you're trying to understand what somebody else wants, think of what you want. Right. If you want to know what makes another person happy, and this is what I do when I go into a group, mm -hmm. I ask myself, you know, what am I feeling? What do I want to get out of this? And at bottom, as you were saying, I'm a, it's exactly the same for all of us. Yeah. We all want respect. We all want a chance to be heard. Mm -hmm. We all want um, your recognition as, as basically valuable people. So what you said about spiritual practice, I love the word practice because mm -hmm. we have to practice every single day. Every single day we have to practice. And when I first began... Um, I didn't know how to practice being present, being present tense, and 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 I um, kept reminding myself every day. And <laughs> I wanted to share this story. I walked into a grocery store it was rather early in the morning, and I um, paid for something. And I said to the the cashier, a young man, I said, I said, good morning. How are you? And I stopped and I looked at him in the eye and. And I'm not joking, this is what he did. He went, oh, <laughs> oh much better, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and it was sad because, yeah. because I realized nobody had ever looked him in the yeah. eye. He was treated as a robot. Yeah. And so and that, that really encouraged me. Much better. Much better. Much better now. <laughs> well, thank you, Susan. You know, we're almost out of time. Emma and I'm... Ten years younger than you, and I can't go on like this. I don't know how you do it. So we're so grateful and so happy that we were able to talk with you today and that I, for one, was able to meet you. I know that you know Joanna before. If there's anything, last thing that you'd like to ask us, um, how can we help you? How can you, uh, what would you like to share with us? Any last thing that you'd like to leave us with? You see me. I don't know why I am traveling. Mm. First, uh, when I got the two opus praise announcement, I thought, oh God, give strength to my husband. At least in 10 days, let me go to America and come back. Mm. How these friends have <laughs> organized this is from Boston to East Coast and West Coast. Everywhere I am meeting, mm. Amma, I have met you somewhere. I have <laughs> met you somewhere. Everywhere. I, it is a miracle. It really is. Mm. Even in this American university, one man has come and touched my feet, mm. Amma, I have seen it. Mm. And mm. this San Diego University, so many people, Amma, we know you. We know you. Like that. God has organized this divine program of traveling <laughs> so much. You have a good secretary. <laughs> <laughs> so I have come and met you. Yes. I believe, I think God will give us an opportunity to work together. Someday. Amen. Yes. That I think we more. have been working together. Yeah. Yes. Now we're more aware. You see, our body is somewhere, <laughs> but in the spirit we are together. <laughs> Thank you Joanna. for bringing us together, Michael. My, my great pleasure, Joanna. Thank you for coming. I know you have an incredibly busy schedule, yes. <laughs> and you're about to go on a trip. I think you will come to Seattle. I can. I'm leaving in a few hours for Tokyo. <laughs> so I'm going to run home and finish packing. So I'm so glad. I'm so glad I got a chance to see you. Mm -hmm. So in spirit, we are all together. That's the final message. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I.